from Rutherglen. Check out that thing. We're here in front of the big wine bottle in Rutherglen, and you can probably guess what a lot of today is going to feature. Yeah, vino? Oh, oh yeah. Lots and lots of vino. I think so. This wine bottle is huge, absolutely huge. 25 meters at least. It would take a while to drink that one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this big fella was completed in the year 1900. It was erected for the biennial festival that they possibly still have. It was originally the town's water supply. Water was pumped here from the Murray. But then in 1945 they constructed a new reservoir. Now it's just uh, just holds wine. <laughs> <laughs> Works commenced November 1899. Wow, these bricks were laid in 1899. What's going on here? Are you I've drinking brought... water at the wine bottle? No, it's wine. Free wine comes with the wine bottle. All right, let's uh, head to somewhere where we can actually drink the wine as opposed to this guy. <laughs> Meant to be a white design to get red drinkers onto white. <laughs> this could be the one that converts Dana. If you have the right food with this one, you have it um, soaked with pork belly, fishes like your Atlantic salmons, and rich creamy type meals. So this one has got the ability to cut through all the oils and fats in the food whilst yeah. you have it. Yeah. I hope it changes your life. <laughs> I don't know about changing my life, but it is pretty nice for a white. Oh, nothing wrong with that smell. Hmm. Still seems kind of pretty full. I was hoping it wasn't too peppery and it's not. It sure is. Depending where it's grown as to how much pepper you get in it. Oh, okay. Slightly cooler area you'll pick up a lot more pepper. Mm. Pepper's the main characteristic of Shiraz. You still pick up a little bit of pepper up here but you pick up some really nice fruit because of the, yeah. the, the climate. No, that's that's very tasty. So yes, I was recommended to try the Derifs in um, Rutherglen. You've got a slight New Zealand definitely. accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like young accent. <laughs> From young, okay. young New South Wales. Dana has a, a Queensland, Toowoomba well, accent, a Toowoomba accent, so she, she's a bit posher than me. That's <laughs> no, just the way you said Rutherglen. Oh, yeah, Rutherglen. <laughs> you missed the E. Like yeah, is it Rutherglen? Rutherglen. It is Rutherglen. Yeah. Well, I would say it like that. Something happened the other day where I was pulled up for doing exactly that with another word, and that's what made me go Rutherglen. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in Rutherglen, <laughs> and that smells absolutely amazing. It's almost ice cream on the, on the nose. It's just delicious. Stewed cherry. Hmm. I pick up more plum. Definitely prune. plum. Yeah, plum prune. prune. More so than cherries. <laughs> I'm always saying to Dana, that's got prune in it. It smells like prune. Oh, She's yes. never said that one. <laughs> I love prunes. So anywhere I can recognize them. A prune being a dried plum, or I guess you could say semi-dried, is one of the most delicious fruits you'll ever eat. The award for knowing what prunes taste like. <laughs> Your own gold medal. That's a trophy as well as a gold medal. Oh, right. And that's special because in the wine industry you've got to get a gold medal before to before you get a trophy. moving forward and getting a, a trophy. You're very special. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the, uh, that, that giraffe, we got the official notification from the Victorian Wine Show won a gold medal. We have the musket, which is a fortified wine. Fortified. Um, style. And it smells, it's so full on with, with raisins. Sweet. Yeah, that'd be delicious for dessert. But it does go really well with anything chocolate, even your um, chocolate sweets, you open it up, it's like a volcano, it just erupts, it goes bleh. Lava, cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds like you're a master chef as well. Oh, I love my food, I love my wine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I like to talk about the food matching because you don't get that a lot. Mmm, -mm. well that was very tasty. So we must have really enjoyed the Viognier Ros Roussan Marsan because we bought a bottle of that and we got a sparkling Shiraz de Riff. I thoroughly enjoyed that tasting, especially the dessert wines, not that we bought any of those, but they were delicious. One of them tasted like raisins, the other one was just nice and soft and sweet and delicious and apricotty. And now I think we might cruise down the main street on our way to our next stop and have a look at all the cool buildings going on down there because we came through there briefly on the way here but we didn't realize what we were in for at the time so we're gonna head back that way and have another squeeze. A 
Oh my goodness, what have we got here? It's a freaking castle. <laughs> Castles don't happen in Australia. Oh, with real cannons. Oh real my gosh, cannon cannons. <laughs> So Rutherglen's actually a whole wine district just over the border into Victoria. So we're right near the New South Wales Victoria border. Luckily, lockdown ended yesterday, so we're able to be here today. And this is not an area where there were actually any cases anyway. That was all in Melbourne. This is very regional compared to Melbourne. Now we've come to All Saints Estate, which is another winery here in Rutherglen, and it is an impressive setup here. The castle was built a very long time ago, in the 1800s I think it was. It was built by two Scotsmen who were pining for home, so they based it on the castle of May and built it here in Australia. Which is why there is a very uncharacteristic castle in the middle of nowhere in Australia. <laughs> and they have a winery here of course, and Indigo Food Co, which does cheese as well, so it's a very happening place. And I can't wait to head inside. That's a delicious smell. So I got the Marseille. Got the Marseille. Yep. I am getting a bit of honey. Yeah, you get the honey, you certainly get honey in the taste. Some people can smell the honey, um, some can't, I can't. I can certainly taste it. It's got the lemon in the taste. Yeah. yeah it's delicious. Different, different to yeah. most other white. And you've got a, a gold trophy, so we know that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they judge you around here. <laughs> the fizzy ones always smell so good, it must be because the bubbles just push the more flavour out. Oh wow, that is that is that is full on that one. You get a lot of really sort of intense fruit when you first try it, and then then it goes really dry. Yeah. So it sits on your palate. It's it disappeared dry. already, but that was full on with flavour. Yeah. Delicious fruit flavour. Well, which one did you order this time? A cab sav, which is usually my favourite kind of red. It smells really nice. Mmm, that's delicious. I really like that one. Only got a little bit of tannin, so it's not too dry on your mouth. But it's uh, really fruity as well. I really like it. I might end up with some of this in my pocket on the way out. Yum. There's actually a, a nice lake here as well. And behind me over here are uh, lots of actual grapevines. This is a really nice place to hang out if you wanted to come for a tasting and then just hang out on the grounds. I hear there's also some interesting stuff up the back which we might get to very soon as well. castle or inside it is kind of just a tin shed behind that facade <laughs> facade double entendre there and in there is the 100 year old aged fortified wines but now we've come around the back a little bit and there's some more of the old barrels here it would be a photographer's dream back here i think we can actually look over there towards the winemaking process and out the back is where some chinese workers used to live so we'll be heading that way in a second too Down here is where some of the winemaking is actually happening. You can see vats here that would be full of grapes as the season progresses, because right now in February is around the time that they would actually start picking all the grapes to start making the wine. And so action is just starting to happen down here, but the vats don't look like they're full yet. And behind me here is the oldest vine on the property, I believe, which is somewhere around 90, 97 years old. And they still have a wine that they make from it, but it's kind of past its productive life at this point. So they don't make a lot of that wine and you can only really get it here at the cellar door. This is the Chinese dormitories. A lot of Chinese workers came over for the gold mines around here back in the 1800s. And some of them ended up working on the vineyards here. And this is where they stayed. And it's kind of a, a tin shed situation. It could have been very hot here in summer, I would think. Not ideal for the sleeping. Part two, this is the other side of the dormitory. Ah, there's actual like the remainder of beds here. I really hope there were mattresses back in the day because that does not look comfortable to sleep directly on top of.
We are at Karawa Distillery. Yay! There's a bit of chocolate too. Whiskey for me. No, actually, you like whiskey too. Whiskey for me. Chocolate for Dana. Whiskey for Dana too. <laughs> chocolate for me too. <laughs> Let's get you started. Long story short, they are all independent characters. So realistically, cool. if you were blindfolded and picked one at random, you could not get the tasting order wrong. But if I had to make a suggestion, which I do, <laughs> I would start and go buy your tasting yeah. notes here. Yeah, that there. But I'll, uh, yeah, let's get started on the top It's a familiar smell, I just can't think, but it's got something else to it that I that is not familiar to me. So the Corolla characters is your Shiraz barrel. So your red wine barrel. Okay. Yeah tend to find a lot of people, as soon as you say that, they'll have another little waft and go, ah, oh, it smells like red wine. I think it's a little subliminal. <laughs> See, we've had some red wine today, so maybe, maybe I'm, that's why I'm not getting too much. It definitely smells like whiskey, I can smell that. <laughs> There's a dustiness to it as well, though, that I, I quite like. So we've moved on to the private notes, and it's definitely sweeter. I wish I could pick flavors. Floral and sweet caramel, honey and hints of oak. Yeah, there's definitely that. Yeah, that's delicious, and flavor. Uh, so I have a sip before the water and the afternoon? Yeah, yeah, that way you'll, you'll discover the advantage of um, change. Well, you can, you can have some of that. This one smells sweet. Tastes sweet too. Kind of um, vanilla-y or something is what I taste, but, but we need to add some water to this one yeah, to open it up. Yeah, try it. See the difference. Just a drop? Yep, just a drop or two, just to break that surface tension. It tends to get a lot of varied responses, some of them are quite passionate. See if it makes me passionate. Mmm, <laughs> some of the vanilla went away and more like berry or raisiny or something came out. Very interesting. Yeah. It's a Rutherglen musket barrel. So musket barrel... So that should be raisiny, right? Yeah. Musket barrel, and interestingly, it's on the rise in popularity for whiskey, but it's not a traditional barrel type at all. Region as a whole, worldwide, we're best known for port and musket. Yeah. So those fortified wines are what we're best known for on the world stage. I would say domestically within Australia, Rather Glen tends to be a little bit more well known for its reds, particularly Shiraz and Duriff. Mm. So, when you've got world leaders on the doorstep and you want a unique product, you're definitely going to go to that. Scotland played around with Musket a little while ago for their whiskies and oh, yeah. released it to the public and the public went, what have you done to Scotch? <laughs> on the increase here in Australia, but it was a little bit of a fail over in Europe. Like beautiful whiskies, but the public just wasn't ready for something so different. Whereas here, we do tend to find that the Australian public are really keen for the next new thing. The final of these five, Bosque Verde. It's almost like a sweetness from lollies kind of smelling, but I also smelt that in a couple of these earlier ones as well. Maybe, maybe it was the second one. A bit of that cherry flavour, like mm. that kind of fake cherry flavour. Why am I smelling bourbon and coke again? Did you say bourbon and coke? Bourbon and coke. Oh, I've got okay, this. yeah, yeah, well, no. <laughs> that classic know. Rutherglen bourbon and coke. <laughs> no, Rutherglen port cask. And I'm just going to serve this lady in chocolate well, well, because no clearly you need a bit of time to yourself yeah. after that. <laughs> <laughs> was certainly a delicious day. If you're down in this part of the world, certainly head to Rutherglen and to Korowa, right here, and uh, pace yourself though, because yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of alcohol to be had in this region, and especially if you're driving, be careful. But there's unlimited water, so treat yourself. But it's been a lovely day. <laughs> yeah, and, it was great. And now we're going to head back to Albury, I think, and you may have already seen the rest of what we're going to do in Albury in the previous video. But anyway, we will see you in the next video, wherever that may be. If you'd like to see more videos from us, please subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Not just vine. Vine. <laughs> Not just wine. From the vine. <laughs> uh, Murray was pumped here. Uh, Murray was pumped here. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Murray's at a, at a pumping. I like full uh, and dark. I think I like all of them. Dark and This is a Chinese dormitory. Dormitories? <laughs> Mosk Verde. Yes, and I'm not getting any bourbon and cocoa. It's an old memory of um, not even bourbon, Jack Daniels and Co Coke slushies from the summer nights about 20 years ago. That's niche. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, I'm not necessarily getting port off it either, which is obviously the barrel that it was in. Now that we know the answer is not bourbon and coke. <laughs> <laughs> Our Christmas release. Well, it just tastes like Christmas in a glass. Whereas, I don't know, what do you think about that? I was just going to say, it's just like Christmas in a glass. <laughs> <laughs>